send you to sleep like the others will. Seven nights a week at 11 p.m. on GB News. My name is Andrew Doyle. Join me every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. for Free Speech Nation. This is a show where we address current affairs and news stories of the week with the help of two wonderful comedian panelists. I brought in comics because I want to give it a lighter edge and also they work for less. See you there. Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. That's and it's about hypocrisy. standards and public life. That's no, hypocrisy. I'll tell you what's hypocrisy, That's Narendra. Hypocr I guarantee you there'll be no spin. We believe in the UK. Yeah. No bias, no censorship. It just doesn't make sense to me. He wasn't doing his job as Chancellor. And no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. on GB News. Join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. for Gloria Meets. In exclusive interviews, I'll be finding out who our politicians really are and what they really think. I think I've seen probably quite enough of Matt Hancock to last me a lifetime. I'll also be getting to know you better, traveling, to find out what you think about the politicians who are fighting for your vote. They've got to get this country back on track. Join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. only on GB News, on TV, radio and online. We are GB News, and we'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you for bringing us your conversations, for helping our great nation find its voice. We are here for you on radio, television, and online across England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. It's not the BBC, you know, you actually get your facts right. We are proud to be GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Good evening, everybody. There's only one thing worth watching on TV right now tonight, isn't there? And well done for finding it. This is Friday Night Feast. Yeah, strap yourselves in for big stories, even bigger opinions and a few laughs along the way as well. This week's Challenge Christie's was chaotic to say the least and it involved this sporting legend. Find out exactly who that is a little bit later on. I'm going to tease you with that one. I'm going to bring you an exclusive interview with the Gimp Man of Essex who's accusing one man of giving the whole Gimp community a terrible reputation. And, of course, there's the fan favourite. It's Dog of the Week tonight. We'll try and find a forever home for the gorgeous Eddie. Oh, yes, yeah, some good news as well. Stand by for some huge news about last Friday's Dog of the Week. You do not want to miss that. I'll also discuss, right at the top of the show, the vote by GPs to close their surgeries at 5 o'clock. They want a 9-to-5 job with two doctors. They're going to be joining me who have opposing views on the subject. A good clash to kick-start your Friday night. And there's the story of the man who might have found the world's biggest chip. Don't say you don't get your money's worth here on Friday Night Feast, ladies and gentlemen. That's all to come after the latest news headlines brought to you this evening by the wonderful Bethany Elsie. Patrick, thank you. I am Bethany Elsie with your top stories from the GB newsroom. The Prime Minister has said he has enormous respect for nurses, but their pay demands of 19% are simply unaffordable. Staff in England, Wales and Northern Ireland will walk out for two days on the 15th and 20th of December in their first national strike in over a century. The Royal College of Nursing has accused the government of rejecting formal talks as an alternative to industrial action. But Rishi Sunak says he's hopeful they can find a resolution. I know things are difficult right now for everyone because of what's happening with inflation and that's why our plans that we outlined last week will get a grip of inflation and bring it down. That's really important. And in the meantime, what the unions are asking for, I think, is a 19% pay rise. And I think most people watching will, will recognise that that's obviously unaffordable and that's why I'm pleased that the health secretary is sitting down, talking to the union, and hopefully we can find a way through this. 
Well, the Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, says the government is shirking its responsibilities. Nurses have been driven to this by the government, and that's a badge of shame for the government. They've never taken strike action before. And for patients, this is going to be devastating news. Nurses don't want to go on strike. A government adviser on immigration has warned against proposals to reduce the number of international students coming to the UK, warning it could bankrupt universities. The Prime Minister is considering rejecting foreign student admissions to top universities and cracking down on the number of dependents they can bring with them. It's after net migration to the UK reached a record half a million in the past year. The Foreign Secretary has announced a new support package for Ukraine as the country is still experiencing blackouts after the latest round of Russian airstrikes. During his first official trip to Kyiv, James Cleverly pledged 35 more emergency vehicles and a further £3 million to help rebuild the country. Ultimately, I think it's incredibly important that the, the UK demonstrates to the Ukrainian people who are bearing the brunt of this brutality from Russia, that we are standing shoulder to shoulder with them through our military support, through our humanitarian support, through our economic support, but also through the visible support. And to the World Cup now, the second half is underway at the Al Beta Stadium in Qatar, where England is facing the USA in the second round of the group stages. And I cannot forget, Southgate, you're the one. The score is currently nil-nil before the match. There were jubilant scenes with England fans confident they'd win and get through to the knockouts. We're going Can to win. win. Yeah, it's going to be 2-1, but yeah. we are going to win anyway. 3-0. 3-1. We have played many teams um, smaller than USA and, and struggled, and USA have got a lot about them. But really, with the Premier League quality we've got, we should be getting out to the group and winning this group. Quite confident tonight, I can't lie. I think. Be optimistic, aren't we? Yeah, I think I've met quite a few American fans who are feeling quite confident too. I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> uh, tournament overall, if we can make it out of the group, who knows what can happen. And we'll update you on that score shortly. You're up to date on TV, online, and DAB Plus Radio. This is GB News. Now it's back to the Friday Night Feast and Patrick. Let's get stuck straight in, shall we, people? It's difficult enough to get a doctor's appointment at the best of times, but it might be about to get a whole lot worse because GPs have voted to change their working hours from 9am to 5pm, reducing the time their surgeries are open by up to two and a half hours a day. The vote comes in a week when it emerged that just one in eight GP appointments are carried out in person at some practices in England. We now need to wait and see whether the NHS will agree to change the opening or should it be really closing hours. To discuss this, I'm joined now by Dr Rachel Ward and Dr Gary Bartlett. We're going head to head here, doctor versus doctor. We like to pit them against each other. Dr Gary, I'll start with you. Many people think that, frankly, GPs should be working harder, not less hours at this particular national health crisis. Yeah, I mean, hi, good, good evening, everyone. Um, I mean, we are already working absolutely flat out at the moment. The demand on the service is absolutely huge. There's big pressure at the moment. Um, my typical, my working day starts about usually around 8.30 and I normally don't finish until about half six, seven o'clock in, in the evening. And although reducing sort of surgery hours in ideal world would be great, but the demand on the service is just absolutely huge at the moment. There's already a shortage of GPs. So yeah. I don't see it. Realistically, I'm not sure how we can do that. Oh, I don't know. Some people would say you should just work harder, mate. Half eight till half six. There's producers here who work a lot longer than that for a lot less money. Dr Rachel Ward, I'll throw it over to you. Some people are saying, and hear me out on this, Dr Rachel, it is the fault of female GPs because, well, according to various different sources, oh, they want, they want, a, they want more of a family life. Is that unfair? 
That's very unfair. So first of all, I, I need to find out the details of where Gary's working, because if he's doing 8.30 to 6.30, I'd love a job there. Um, my average day is 12 to 14 hours. Now, let's let's first of all get facts right. This is not about reducing, you know, we're not look, talking about a nine to five job. General practice is never going to be a nine to five job. It's talking about availability of appointments during those times. Because at the moment, what we're seeing is that we are delivering more GP appointments than ever. In October, we delivered 32 million appointments in general practice, mm. which is the record number. So this is not about access to general practice. We've had the best access we've ever had. It's about capacity. We do okay. not have the capacity. Oh, Dr. Gary, it looks like I'm stuck with you for a little bit. Dr. Gary Bartlett there. Um, did you really go into medicine, into being a GP? Let's be honest, was it, was it a bit more for the money or was it to look after patients? Oh, I think it's definitely to, to look after the patients, of course, Patrick. I think when you're, you know, applying to medical school when you're sort of 17, 18 years old, you, you know, the last thing you think about is is the money that, that you're going to be earning. You go in it, you certainly go into the profession for patient care. And I think the amount of hours I do, and if you broke it down, I think actually I, I, I work a lot of hours. And, is it, uh, can I ask, is it how many, days, how many days a week is it, Gary? Typically, uh, general practice, general practice is a seven day, seven day service. For you personally? Um, me personally, I will work anywhere between sort of five, five days, six days. Sometimes I've been known to work seven days a week sometimes. Um, and that, that is general practice for you. It's not, it's, it's, okay. not, it's not a nine to five service. The health service it isn't a nine to five service. That mm. Just echo Rachel, really, the, the demand for yeah. appointments is absolutely huge at the moment. OK, Dr. Rachel, do you think that patients have a right, though, to be angry? Because the optics of this are terrible. We've got record numbers of people waiting for routine treatments. I appreciate not all of that is to do with GPs at all, but it's the health system as a whole. And I think a lot of people are shouting at their TV screens going, come on, get to work. I think people have an absolute right to be angry, but don't be angry at the people who are working harder than we've ever worked. Be, ha be angry at the government who have run down the NHS over the last 12 years. We have 1,700 fewer GPs than when the Conservative government's last manifesto... Why is that, then? Why, why is that? Why is that? Because then I've got to just counter that, Dr Rachel, by saying not all of that can be in terms of the Conservative government, just purely because, I mean, we had net migration figures through yesterday of 504,000. I mean, population growth is growing much more rapidly than we can stock up our public services, and that has to have something to do with it, Dr Rachel. The number of GPs, that is falling. The number of GPs is falling because the job is unsustainable, and so people are leaving the profession, they're leaving the NHS, they're stopping being doctors. Because at okay. the moment, I think I cut out before, but what we're facing is a yeah. situation where I will do 50 appointments in a day. The safe mm. recommended level is 25. Okay. So if I'm taking risks every day, I'm not going to keep doing that. I'm just going to ask you both the same question. I've got literally seconds with each of you, but it's, it's kind of a yes or no. Mm. Dr Gary, if they reduced mm. the tax bracket for the higher earners, which meant that you didn't lose an absolute shed load of your income if you worked overtime, would you be inclined to work more overtime? Uh, yeah, uh, but perhaps I would be. Yeah, it's, it's an expensive enough, profession way, to be a would. doctor. Yeah, yeah I was going to say we've got medical indemnity fees, GMC fees to pay. We do pay a lot of money just to be doctors as well. Mm, fair enough. Dr Rachel, I'll ask the same thing for you. I mean, this is one of the things about GPs working overtime before Jeremy Hunt clobbered people even more as well, to be fair. Uh, realistically, if that tax bracket was, I don't know, what would you say, uh, shrunk, as it were, there was less tax for overtime, would you be inclined to do a bit more? I presume you're talking about 45% tax bracket. The answer is no, because I'm nowhere near paying that, so it doesn't affect me. OK, fair enough. All right, both of you, thank you very, very, thank you very much. Cheers. That was Dr Rachel Ward there and Dr Gary Bartlett going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Well, not really, actually. I was more going toe-to-toe-to-toe -to -toe -to -toe with them over whether or not GP should, you know, work a little bit harder. I'm delighted to say that joining me in the studio between now and 9pm are the impressionist Francine Lewis and the comedian Charmaine Davis. Thank you very much. Right, Francine, I could see you shaking your head throughout the course of that. What's your hot take on the fact that doctors want to work nine-to-five? Oh, I could go on for ages, but I won't. But seriously, I can't... 
can't even get to speak to a doctor, let alone see a doctor. Mm. I mean, the receptions are ruthless. They say, oh, if it's serious, um, you know, go to A&E or call 111. Um, and when you do get to uh, speak to a doctor, over obviously mm. Zoom, they won't they won't speak to you any other way. It's, it's always video call. Um, it's always a different doctor. I mean, years ago we got to see the doctor we knew. They knew your medical history. Mm. It's impossible these days, and I think it's it's absolutely okay. diabolical what's happening because it's scary. If you're ill, what do you do? You cannot get to see a doctor these no. days. And, and it's, it's a really tough one, Charmaine, isn't it? Because, look, I've never saved a life. I'd be terrible in a life and death situation, I would imagine. And, and you have to take your hats off to GPs and nurses, of course, but do they not have a duty to, in a national health crisis, if your job is as a medical professional, do you not just have to, you know, bite down a little bit and crack on? Well, they are humans, after all. Mm. They're both humans, same as me, and, and they obviously have, you know, health problems and mental health problems as well. Mm. So, and the more work that they do, the more pressure they'll be under. I mean, my doctor has just retired. And I have no idea who my doctor is anymore. Well, that's, um, that's, a, that's, that's a slight concern, <laughs> that, Charmaine. Hopefully nothing catastrophic happens in the next 20 minutes or so. I'm yeah. medically trained as well, by the way. Are you? I'm an ex-air hostess, so we're medically... I can save you, you're fine. And you know where our yeah. nearest exits are. Right, thank exactly. you very much, Charmaine Davis, Dan, Francine Lewis. They'll be joining me throughout the course of the show. But, as they used to say on Monty Python, now to something completely different. I've been speaking exclusively to the gimp man of Essex. Why, you may ask, well, as regular viewers of Friday Night Feast will know, the Somerset gimp has been causing controversy, wreaking havoc, of course, across Somerset for years now. And we've been on gimp watch for a heck of a long time here on Friday Night Feast. Well, that particular chat was caught, cool, but the Essex gimp was very, very unhappy with the Somerset gimp. Earlier this month, we did cover the news that police had made an arrest in relation to the catastrophic and shameful case of the Somerset gimp, who was terrorising residents in that county for years. I sat down with the Gimp Man of Essex and I asked him whether the Somerset Gimp poses a threat to the general public. I think he might well do, yeah. I, I, I can't see exactly what he's trying to get out of it, but the only thing that worries me in some ways is sometimes with people, the more they get away with things, the more they up their game. So, you know, what could be next? I don't, I don't want to petrify the the community there, but it just gets you wondering, you know, we've, we've all done it. You, you'll get away with something, you'll push, you'll push it a little bit further next time. If you get away with it again, you push it further again. So, I mean, what is the guy heading to, you know? It, my, my reaction is not really good. It's, 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 it's not on. What the guy's doing really isn't on. Uh, whether he's a good, whether he's a normal person, you don't really go around jumping out on people and scaring the life out of them. You know, pe people want to wear this stuff uh, and, and express themselves in that way. They're going to be frightened to because you're going to end up with a vigilante mob really after them, aren't you, you know? Oh, indeed. Well, it took us a while to set up the interview with the Gimp Man of Essex, who is regularly spotted in his local supermarket in his full outfit. He uses his role to, believe it or not, raise money for charity. But this is the big question. What does he do for a living? Um, it's the reason um, this interview has been a bit evasive because um, I, I do work a lot of hours and have a busy, busy, busy work life. Uh, retail. Retail. There we go. All right, good stuff. It's a certain type of shop, isn't it? Well, there we are. We've got loads coming your way. And indeed, after the break, we are going to be talking about the England fans in Qatar who were invited to a sheikh's palace. Yep, they even met lions and tigers and exotic birds. And we might have found the world's biggest chip. Yes, that's all coming your way in the thing that we love to do where we delve into the wonderful world of local news in Round Your Parts. Don't go anywhere. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm, join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. And That's it's about hypocrisy. standards and public life. That's no, hypocrisy. I'll tell you what's hypocrisy, Narenda. I guarantee you there'll be no spin. We believe in the yeah. UK. No bias, no censorship. It just doesn't make sense to me. He wasn't doing his job as Chancellor. And no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm on GB News.
every morning from six o'clock, we'll wake you up with GB News Breakfast with all the stories you didn't know from the night before. So whether it's serious news, entertainment, or your own views from all over our great nation, we're here to kick off your day with a smile. And the national media should be reflecting and reporting what's happening here. You will notice the Northwestern accents. <laughs> Whether you're with us on TV, radio, or online, every morning, it's breakfast from 6 a.m. Hope you can join us. Hello there, it's Eamon Holmes here from Breakfast on GB News. We're not just on your television and your screens, you know. We're on DAB Plus Digital Radio, so you can listen to your favourite shows on the move. If you've not yet listened to GB News Radio, it's very simple. We're on your radio player and tune in app on your smart speaker, phone or tablet, or online at gbnews.uk. Take us with you wherever you go. GB News Radio. You never have to miss a moment of the People's Channel. Join me every Sunday at 6pm for Gloria Meets. In exclusive interviews, I'll be finding out who our politicians really are and what they really think. I think I've seen probably quite enough of Matt Hancock to last me a lifetime. I'll also be getting to know you better, travelling, to find out what you think about the politicians who are fighting for your vote. They've got to get this country back on track. Join me every Sunday at 6pm only on GB News, on TV, radio and online. My name's Tom Harvard and join me 9.30am every weekday for The Briefing, your one-stop shop for everything you need to know about what's going on in politics today. I wonder if this is a deal that might need to be like the biscuits in this factory, twice baked. Is there not an opportunity here to win out against the extremes? Tom Harvard, GB News. What are you going to do about it? Things should have been done differently and they, and they certainly are being done differently. Don't miss it. The Briefing with me, Tom Harwood, 9.30 Monday to Friday on GB News. Hello, I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11pm, where I'll be joined by two of the country's top comedians as we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it, I guarantee, but we'll also have some fun along the way. That's GB News Headliners at 11pm. We won't put you to sleep, unlike some of the other paper review shows out there. So join us, 11pm, seven nights a week. We are GB News, the people's channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I was wondering when I would emerge in that promo, but right at the end, there we go. Right, welcome back to Friday Night Feast. Now it's time for Round Your Parts, where we dig deep to find some of the absolute gems of local news. Little bit of light, little bit of shade. We'll tell you shortly why people are kicking up a stink about the state of the toilets at an RAF base, but we start with the news that broke earlier today. And my former GB News colleague, Deanna Davison, has revealed that she won't stand at the next general election. Davison became the first Tory MP for Bishop Auckland, local link, when she won the red wall seat in 2019. But she says she hasn't had anything like a normal life for 20-something years. Davison is the eighth Conservative MP who said they're going to stand down. I want my panel reaction to this now, because, basically, it's a massive Tory MP exodus. Fully in on this, the Tories basically gave um, MPs about two weeks to say whether or not they're going to stand at the next general election. And as many as 80, 80 might decide that they're not going to stand. Do you think it's like rats off a sinking ship? Do you know, I don't know what's going on anymore. It's just mm -hmm. every day is different. Somebody else is quitting. You know, prime ministers can't hang around for more than two weeks. And I can't keep up, quite honestly. No. I mean, who... who I've passed who one that lasted who? longer than this trip. Yeah. <laughs> seriously. Yeah, I'd love to better taste in the... No, I won't. Right, OK. No, but seriously, some people would say, hang on a minute, it was these Tories MPs that biffed Boris Johnson, they got him out, and then they got rid of Liz Truss, and then they just imposed Rishi Sunak on us, and then we've got massively higher taxes now, and then they all just leg it. I mean, come on, stick around, clean up your mess. 
I think the government are in just... It's just such a mess, isn't it? Oh. And, yeah, I mean, look, Liz Truss, she lasted as long as probably one of Katie Price's marriages. <laughs> oh, 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 oh and, shots fired! And, oh, how dare you! But what I'm saying is it's just, yeah, it's an absolute mess. That's it's all a I mess. Say. I still say, bring back Boris. Bring back Boris. <laughs> At least he was alive. Exactly. At least he was alive. Yes, anyway, right now to the incredible story of the England fans who travelled to the World Cup and ended up chilling with the son of a shake. The only one who could... No, I won't. And his pet <laughs> lion. Yes, the Liverpool Echo picked up on the story of two Everton supporters from Merseyside who were over in Qatar. Here's what happened, in their own words. Yeah, last night we met one of the shake's sons and he took us back to the palace and he showed us he had lions and everything. They made us so welcome. We were um, obviously on a bit of a hunt for some beers. And um, he was like, yeah, yeah, we saw beer, saw beer. So we jumped into the back of his um, Toyota Land Cruiser, ended up at a big palace, and um, we were in the back. He showed us his monkeys, his exotic birds. Yeah, well, our viewers can now see what happened then. I'll describe it for our radio listeners. What we've got there is basically a scouser with a lion, and um, he's messing around with it in the back of a shake's huge gaff. So there we are. I mean, I find it fascinating as well. You imagine that that particular shake's son is now got a rather lot of explaining to do because he shouldn't really have beers round at his house, should he, in Qatar? But there we go. I mean, yes. Um, you ever messed around with a lion? Well, they looked like they were having a roaring time. Uh, um, it doesn't write itself, no. this thing, Paul. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I've always... I, I love lions, actually. I think they're one of the most gorgeous, handsomest mm. animal. Um, but you know what? I'd be fascinated. I would love to go into a sheikh's palace. Yeah. I really would, and meet their lions and tigers and whatever <laughs> else, really. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, I would love well, to shake a sheikh. Well, if, you, if you're watching Sheikh Mahmoud, right? <laughs> Front scene is free. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Charmaine, Sheikh Charmaine's got a ring to it. Yeah, hasn't it? I think uh, I could be one of his wives. Um, I what, think... not the way it's got to be one off, hasn't <laughs> it? Uh, no, I took, quite honestly, I would find meeting all the animals in his menagerie far yeah. more exciting than the football. Yeah, well, yes. especially, Come on. especially yes. now. I don't want to remind anyone that the football's on, but apparently uh, I think it's still nil-nil. Yeah, it's still nil nil. Oh. So yeah, you're you better watching this, okay? Uh, right, we're going to Carlisle. Apparently, they're watching it. In the key focus on the show. Anyway, now to Carlisle, where a man was convicted of shoplifting after stealing an interesting collection of items. So Matthew Neal admitted taking five packets of condoms, lubricants, and a cereal bar from a boot store in Carlisle city centre. He also stole some health tablets and was fined one hundred. Pounds. There we go. Uh, Charmaine, I mean, that's an odd collection of things to Nick, isn't it? It is an odd collection, but maybe he just couldn't see a doctor. Mm. And so he got the health tablets. This is it. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Get to see his GP. I think I think you've got it there. Yeah, possible to see a doctor. He thought I'd yeah. steal the tablets. Exactly. It's cost him more in the long run, so he might as well have just paid for it. Yeah. So... Well, you've got a last true, actually. That's there you go, never steal. Quid. I don't know. I don't know. Do the... condoms cost that much? I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, does that make me sound better or worse? <laughs> anyway, right. We don't know how many condoms he bought, do we? That's true. And how That's much true. is that cereal bar? Yeah, we'll move it on. Right, so next we head to Lincolnshire where people working at <laughs> RAF Cranwell are kicking up a stink because the toilets aren't good enough. So the Grantham Journal, we really do dig deep in local news here, people. The Grantham Journal reports that Unite Union members held the protest on World Toilet Day. Never miss an opportunity, do they? Unite Regional Officer Paula Stevens said the Ministry of Defence should immediately remove the blockage which is preventing adequate facilities being provided. I mean, that's... Um, you You would never work in such conditions, Francie. No, and there's nothing worse than a stinky toilet. No. I mean, you know, I I am got a thing about the a loo. I remember in school, I used to never... Even if I really needed to go, I wouldn't because I just found them always smelly and... Yeah. But public yeah, so always disgusting. I'm really yeah. funny about disgusting. toilets, so that's disgusting, a stinky toilet. No, indeed. Um, I've flown halfway across the world when I used to be an air hostess, funny right. enough. Oh, did yeah. you? Yeah. There you go. And I literally would not use the toilet. I would literally burst into my flat when I got home going, I've not been to the loo since Denmark. Let me... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been to the loo since Denmark, right. No, I would hold it. And just don't use public toilets. They, no, I mean, I it doesn't like matter it. where they are. No. They're always disgusting. No, yes. no, exactly. Yeah, especially on the Hampstead Heath area. Right, finally <laughs> tonight, finally tonight, we have huge news from Wokingham in Berkshire, where a man might have found the world's biggest... Is that Mark Dunn? Oh, my God. 
And I might have found the world's <laughs> biggest chip. Mark Dolan's found the world's biggest chip. And uh, Alison Coleman discovered the whopper in a package of oven chips. Sadly, the Guinness World Record says there's no known record for the longest chip. And you won't be able to see the chip in a museum because Alistair ate it. There we go. I can't help but feel like it's a little bit like that Father Ted sketch, isn't it? It's like that chip could just be very close to the camera or far <laughs> away. We'll never know. But we've got loads coming your way, ladies and gentlemen, because after the break, it's time for Challenge Christie's, the part of the show where I just show you how brilliant I am at absolutely <laughs> everything. And we've got a little something to get you thinking over the next few minutes. The terms Madhouse, Oki and Round the Clock, that's Madhouse, Oki and Round the Clock, are all used in which sport? Is it A, darts, B, croquet or C, bowls? Find out very shortly. We are GB News and we'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you for bringing us your conversations for helping our great nation find its voice. We are here for you on radio, television, and online. Across England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. It's not the BBC, you know, you actually get your facts right. We are proud to be GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Monday to Thursday on GB News, it's Bev Turner today from 10 a.m. We're going to be here for you, our GB News family, to keep you up to date, but also make you smile. The guy went from puberty to adultery. <laughs> and I can't wait to bring a few of my own opinions. I have no time for cultural totalitarianism. Yeah. We'll engage in passionate, but always polite debate with your thoughts and opinions at the center of it all. Monday to Thursday, 10 till 12, on TV, on radio, and online. Every Friday and Sunday night from 9, it's Mark Dolan tonight. We're on the same page again. Great, There's something great, great happening. Let Ian finish. Don't be such a cranky. <laughs> that mini budget was the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> and on Saturday, my show just got bigger. From 8, it's Mark Dolan's Saturday Night In. You can't govern a country if you can't speak. <laughs> Stop talking. My God, we reached the end. I've never been early in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Only on GB News, the People's Channel. We are GB News, right across the nation. You can get us on television, on radio, on digital. We're absolutely everywhere. Amazing! You see, amazing! You remind me of me and the European Parliament. <laughs> but here's the most important bit. We are not part of the mainstream establishment. We think and speak just like you do. We are the People's Channel. Magnificent. That's really, really thoughtful. Come and join us on GB News, the People's News Channel. Hello, I'm Alastair Stewart, and I'd invite you to join me at noon on Saturdays and Sundays for Alastair Stewart and Friends. I've been in this business for over 40 years. Now, here at GB News, I've never been happier. I get to choose the big stories that really interest me. We hear what you have to say, and you hear what I have to say. I really hope you can join me noon on Saturdays and Sundays. Hi there, it's Stephen and Anne. At breakfast from 6am, you'll always be caught up with everything you need to know. The latest headlines, opinions and debates. We'll bring you the good news and the bad, but most of all, we're here for you. Remember, send in your views and let us know what you would like us to talk about. That's because we're your news channel. And every morning at 6am, it's breakfast on GB News. On Mark Dolan tonight, in my big opinion, whilst the waiting list for treatment spirals, the NHS tells its menopausal staff to stay home and do lighter duties. Our health service has lost the plot. In my take at 10, Nicola Sturgeon's independent dream is in tatters. McBrexit is off the table, thank God. In the big question, should it be more difficult to go on strike? Plus a stunning new book all about Elvis Presley. We speak to the author and my all-star panel and tomorrow's papers. We're live at nine. Welcome back, everybody. Now, before that exceptionally long break, I asked you, the terms madhouse, hockey and round the clock are all used in which sport? Is it A, darts, B, croquet or C, bowls? And the answer is, of course, 
darts. Yes, the madhouse is double one. The hockey is the line from where the players throw the darts. And round the clock is a popular variation of the game. And that leads me nicely onto this. Yes, it's time for Challenge Christie's. And in the last few months, I've done some incredible things. I've landed an aeroplane, I've milked a cow, and memorably, I've conquered my fear of spiders. I hated that. All of those challenges were completely sprung upon me, completely out of the blue, had no idea what I was doing or where I was going. But this week, I must admit, I did know in advance what I was going to do. And I had the chance to show everyone just how flipping brilliant I am at darts. And <laughs> the sport has changed a lot down the years. In the 80s, players used to smoke during a game. And here, Cliff Lazarenko lit Jockey Wilson's cigarette for him. It's my kind of sport. It should be in the Olympics. And, of course, many players also used to have a beer or two on stage, didn't they? Quite famously. Bobby George was a top player in that era. So when I got the chance to meet him, I thought I'd roll back the years and do darts as darts was meant to be played. Check out what happened. OK, it's fair to say this place is pretty moody. I'm not exactly sure where I am, but apparently the dart is through here. So let's have a go, shall we? Ooh. Flipping, huh? See this place? Look at this. It's like royalty, isn't it? All right. All right, Petri. How are you, Bobby? Still here. Still here. Fantastic <laughs> stuff. Still here, sir. Right, OK, if anyone's a bit thick, tell me who you are. I'm Robert George. They call me Bobby George. Sometimes they call me late for dinner, but... Uh... <laughs> so, presumably, you're going to teach me, or try to teach me, how to play darts. The most important thing, when you throw darts, you yeah. have to put your hand out when you throw the dart. OK. You can't snatch a dart. Yeah. You've got to follow through with the dart. I'm quite concerned, Bobby, right, because I've not had a proper darts warm-up, right? So I think it's probably time, isn't it? Well, you have to have warm... Yeah, have a, have a sit first. You have to get warmed up to play darts. You're halfway there, son. Because <laughs> everyone plays with different darts, different weights, different flights, different mm. can, uh, canes, good grip, small... Uh, 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 some darts got no grip on them. OK. So I'm just going to see how you get on with these. Do I hold it a certain way? You hold it exactly how you feel comfortable. Hey. So you have no idea to throw a dart and see if you can hit the target. That's not just kicking him. OK, all right, I'm ready. Try right out like this. OK. One, that's it. So, yeah, I've told the same. Yeah, so... Oh, yeah. Give it one more go. I think I get the hang of this. <laughs> that's all right. That's not, that's bad. not bad. That's not bad. Hey! Bobby, what have I got to do? Right, you've got to get 101 or more in six dials. 101 or more in six dials? Yeah. Twenty. And five. Thirty. Okay, now I've got seventy one or more. You've had one go. So I'll give you another chance, have another go. But this time keep it on the board. You don't get nothing from outside the bed. You won't get nothing in the bed. Oh you know, that's it, go on. You gotta you gotta get a treble now, son. Go on. Treble. You've done it. <laughs> well, you've done it, done it. Triple 19. Look at that. You know, you'll have a bit tomorrow. Get in. Get in. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Master of Darts, Bobby. Well done, sir. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Best pleasure. coach in the world, mate. Best coach. That's a pleasure. Pleasure. Right, well, this has been Challenge Christie's. Yes, another absolute triumph. Bobby, thank you very much, mate. Pleasure, son. Fantastic sure. stuff. I'm going to give you a set of darts. All right. Oh. Some of my flights. Look at these. And uh, may the dance be with you. Oh, fantastic. All right, I'll see myself right. out, mate. All Cheers. Right, mate. Take lucky. it easy, yeah? See you in a bit. Be lucky. Oh. Glad I got rid of him. It's Christmas every day when he leaves. Oh, dear. Hey, well, there you go. That's one of my favourite ones yet, for obvious reasons. Uh, if you're listening on GB News Radio, you can watch that challenge right now on our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and also on Twitter. Now, I've met some sporting legends in my time, but none of them match up to the great Bobby George. And I'm delighted to say that he joins me now. Bobby, yes, you legend. Thank you very much. Well, there we go. Thank you very much for being my first ever darts coach. And as people can see, I'm brilliant at it, Bobby. Yeah, you are. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, lucky. So you, you drink better and smoke better and you talk better. Yeah. The darts, the great darts. That's true. Now, just talk us through, because that was your house that people were seeing there, and it's exquisite. You've got a cracking little downstairs area there. Talk us through it all. Well, what do you mean? It's a, well, so it's a pub in my house, one side. I'll do. Right, right OK, you, fair enough. That's what you want. I've got a nice big screen. I can watch the darts if I'm home. I'll watch the football. I've got, I can go in the other um, lounge bit and near the, with the dogs near the fire. So I've got everything, really. And my wife keeps feeding me all the time when I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely stuff. Right, but, Bobby, you were one of the... I would say one of the first kind of... Not one of the first big names of darts, but you really helped to elevate the sport, I think. You know, what does, what does darts mean to you, Bobby? Well, I, um, I think it's a great... It's, it's, it's an odd game to... It's an easy game to play, but it's a hard game to play well. Darts, to me... Um, I didn't play till I was 30 years old, so I wasn't really bothered about it. But when I actually started it, I thought, well, everyone said, oh, you play well. Uh, what are you drinking? I thought, it's a what a lovely game. You know? <laughs> exactly. And, I, and then when I started playing and winning tournaments, going around the world, meeting people, people I would never, ever meet if I never threw a dart. So it's, it's opened up the world for me. So well, the game is the winner of the world if you play well. Can, no, no, you see the prize money that some of them are getting these days, Bobby. You and I were having a bit of a chat about some of the things that you won over the course of your career. Just talk us through some of your most memorable prizes. And... Well, I won the News of the World. Uh, I won it twice. News of the World, when I started playing, was um, probably like this, the World Championship then. Um, I, I didn't I, no, I didn't win no money to film. I won, a, I won a mini car, a mini. So that was uh, a car I won. Um, I've... I won a lot of tournaments, and people say, well, the money then wasn't very good. But when you think of it, in, like, in the 70s, you could buy out for like five or six grand. Yeah. You know, and uh, now you've got the, the £250,000 for a, a, just yeah. a normal house, if you're lucky. So the, the, the value uh, is the same. The Go prize money when I hasn't really gone up, you get what, the same with your money. But you've got well, to look after it when you get it. Well, that's the thing. Yes, exactly. I wish I could do that. It burns a hole in my pocket. But, Bobby, look, <laughs> thank, you very, thank you very, very much, mate. You're an absolute legend. I really appreciate you making the time for us to, to come round and invade your house and have a cracking evening. So thank you very much. Bobby George there. Hey, what a legend. What hey, a keep legend. Practicing. Keep practising. Keep practising. I will. Bobby keep George, practicing. thank you very much. Yeah. Darts legend. Darts legend. There we go. We'll let him go and enjoy the rest of the England game, which I still... Nil nil, so you better watch in this, people. Don't you dare move anywhere. Or I'll find where you live. Right, OK. After the break, uh, I'll try to rehome a rescue dog in our ever popular feature, Dog of the Week. And I've got an exciting update on last week's pooch. And also, at some point, I promise you, I will talk to the panel and not to let them sit here drinking wine. I'll see you shortly. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deeds & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Mark Stein. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. We are GB News, the people's channel. Why not take us home with you by visiting the GB News shop at gbnews.store. You'll find all the official merchandise, a really good present actually for yourself, your friends or your family. We ship across the UK mainland at no extra cost. GB News, the people's channel. Hello, I'm Esther Rackvey. And I'm Philip Davis. Whether you're watching or listening on TV, online or on radio, we handpick the latest stories, debates and expert opinions for your weekend. So whether that's politics, news or showbiz, we've got it covered. Join us every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock on GB News. Join my show, Farage, 7pm till 8pm, Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. You've been cancelled. Join the club. Oh, my goodness me. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilised conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. 
Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, six till seven on Jubes and Kerr. Me and my panel will get stuck right into the day's events. And I can tell you, in fact, I can warn you, expect some robust debates and strong opinions and perspectives from both sides of the fence. It's about you at home as well. I love to read out all of your comments, or at least as many as I can. So join me, Michelle Jubery, Monday to Friday, six till seven on Jubes and Kerr. Hello there, it's Eamon Holmes here from Breakfast on GB News. We're not just on your television and your screens, you know. We're on DAB Plus Digital Radio, so you can listen to your favourite shows on the move. If you've not yet listened to GB News Radio, it's very simple. We're on your radio player and tune in apps. On your smart speaker, phone or tablet, or online at gbnews.uk. Take us with you wherever you go. GB News Radio. You never have to miss a moment of the People's Channel. I'm Mark White. As GB News Home and Security Editor, I cover those key issues that are so important to you. Our authorities, our communities doing all they can to combat violent crime. With the public services under unbearable strain, why are we still failing to control our borders? Defence, the first priority of any government, has been continually hollowed out. Can we trust our politicians to protect the armed forces? Join me, Mark White, on GB News. Welcome back to Friday Night Feast. Oh. It's time now for Patrick's Fake News. So I go out and about, you all know it by now, and make up a story that's just about believable and see whether or not the British public will fall for it. Now, this week's subject was the World Cup. And, well, I decided to hit them with a variety of different things, most of them relating to Qatar's abominable human rights record. It's fair to say there's been plenty of controversy about that, but would people believe the things that I was about to tell them? Here's what happened. Oh, you know the World Cup's going on at the moment yeah. in Qatar? Apparently, the Qatari authorities are saying that if players hug now after they score a goal, they'll get booked. What? Yeah. Oh, that's awful. Do you think it's bad? Yeah, obviously. It's also just so stupid. Can they waste their time on something more important? I don't know anything about the World Cup, so... Just, it's more about human rights, really. Yeah, I mean, it seems, it seems an odd thing to do, isn't it? Uh, I've got no words. It's ridiculous. It seems unlikely. You don't think they're going to do it? No, I don't think so. You think if it is, though, players should not hug? No, they should definitely hug. You should ask someone else. Uh, players have always hugged after, after games, whether it be any sport, and I totally believe that anything that's to do with politics and what a country's culture uh, expresses shouldn't be involved in sport. Apparently the Qatari government are going to ban women from the stadiums. Just want to get your views on that. Not very good. <laughs> You don't think it's good? No, not at all. So apparently the Qatari authorities are saying that if a player takes his top off when he scores, they could be arrested. OK. Your views? Uh, I mean, I think that's pushing it a little too much. I think they're con trying to control too much. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, if they want to celebrate, they should be able to celebrate the way they want, to an extent. Mm -hmm. But taking your top off, I don't think is, uh, is disrespectful in any way. Well, there we go. They all fell for it, didn't they? I'm going to bring in my wonderful panel again now. Francine, would you have fallen for that, do you think? I mean, the Qatari government have got some pretty abominable human rights records as it is. I would have. I'm quite gullible. So, you? Yeah. And you know what? You're quite believable. You're a good actor. <laughs> it's concerning. <laughs> it's it is concerning. concerning. Such a great liar. So, yeah, well, I would believe it. I mean, yeah. I've been lying about being a TV presenter for a very long time now. We <laughs> had to find out about, about that. Um, yeah, but, but seriously, I mean, the idea that the Football World Cup is in Qatar anyway is a bit naff, isn't it? I think, you know, if you'd told them that, you know, England was bringing the cup home, yeah. they would still not have believed you. No, no. Because <laughs> they haven't done it for 60 odd years, they ain't going to do it this no. time. I'm sorry to be such a naysayer. But the but thing is, I've had to tone down fake news because I got in trouble a couple of weeks ago because I went yeah. out and said, yeah, I went out and I said about Greta Thunberg, I was trying to make it up, I said that she's been done for slaughtering polar bears. Right? <laughs> and, uh, and people were like, oh, no, you can't say that about her. You can't say that on national television. Have that, Greta. Right? And, um, and, and then I was going to be like, oh, you know, they, they can't have women in the stadiums. If a woman's in the stadium, they'll flog them. And they were like, no, oh, no, you can't do that. Well, actually, it turns out that over there, y you might get flogged. So, well, you know, I, that's just, put... I can't do it because it's not fake news. Yeah, well, I wouldn't put anything past, you know, anything like that with Qatar. So, yeah, I would no. believe it. 100%. It's turned into a massive political thing anyway. So everyone's assuming that it's a... Forget about the yeah. football. It's all about oh, you can't do this and you can't, can't say that, that and you can't. And you you can just stroke yeah. a tiger or whatever. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go around to a shake's house and stroke a tiger whilst you're on the sauce, but you can't go and wear a rainbow armband. Sorry, I've just got one. What's that? What's that? 
Greta Thunberg does not slaughter polar bears in her spare time. OK. I right, do. it's time now for... Dog of the Week! In a moment, yeah. Yeah. In a moment, I'll introduce you to another gorgeous dog who we're hoping can find its forever home. But first, we have some great news about the little chap who featured last Friday. Yes, Barry the Bosnian dog has been adopted. Barry is currently in that shelter in Bosnia, but he's going to be brought over to the UK next month when he'll move in with his new family. Wonderful stuff. Oh. There he is. Now, we told you last week that Barry was found lying in the road with three broken legs and multiple injuries, oh, yes. but the shelter's owner wouldn't give up on him. And after a series of operations and sessions in a hydrotherapy pool, Barry... He's only gone and got himself a new home. That's Yay. right. You see, Dog of the Week yeah. has an impact, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, quick one. Well done, Barry. Yeah, yeah, Barry. Barry. We love you, Barry. Right, OK, Woo. let's hope tonight's Dog of the Week also has a happy ending. Poor Senator Fraser. This evening, we're hoping you can help Eddie find his forever home. Eddie is just over a year old and is a crossbreed. And he's with Dogs and Homes in Hampshire, which does what it says on the tent, hopefully. I'm joined now by Gary Baxter from Dogs and Homes. Gary, thank you very, very much. Right, lovely stuff to have you on the show. Tell us a bit about Eddie. Eddie, he's a fantastic dog. So he's calm, he's good with children, he's good with cats. Uh, he's good down the pub as well. Um, he came across uh, from Portugal back in January. He's been with some owners since then, uh, but unfortunately, we now need to find him another home. Um, very, just a great dog, well trained, um, okay. house trained, travels well in the car. Um, just a really fantastic dog. And the all important question is he good on a walk? He's really good on a walk. He's, he's well trained. He's got a chance this one. Go, he walks the hill. He's very, very good. Oh, fantastic. OK, and so you think you think he might be all right around kids? Could he go to... We can see we can see Eddie now. Look Aww. at him now. Oh, isn't he gorgeous? Bless. Really, yes, good. So, so does he take a lot of exercise? Do you think he'd be good around children? Would he be good for a family? He would be good in any home. He really would. If you're an Olympic runner, probably he couldn't keep up with you. But anything other than that, he would be absolutely fine. And, and I genuinely say it, he is a brilliant dog. And he's got no special dietary requirements or anything like that. He's just a top standard, straight out the straight out the top draw dog. If people want to get in touch with you and give Eddie a forever home, a bit like Barry the Bosnian pooch from last week, how do they do it? If they go onto our website, uh, find his profile, click the link to our adoption page, fill out the form, and then we will get in touch. OK, and it's dogs at and homes, which is with an N, isn't it? So dogs and yeah. homes. Dogs yes, there we go. Homes, all one word, dot org, dot UK. Yeah, you can see it on your screen right there, people. Right, well, look, thank you very much, and thank you, as ever, for making the time on a Friday night, whilst there's an England game on, to go and try and get a doggery home. You, sir, are a legend. Thank you very much. Give it up for Eddie, who is our Dog of the Week. Yay! And of course, Gary Baxter. Good. Oh, there you go. Right, OK. Um, Charmaine, dog or cat? I think I've asked you this before. Don't I... say cat, don't say cat, don't say cat. Dog, don't definitely dog. Oh, dog. Yeah. Definitely dog. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I love dogs. Fantastic. Now, would you, would you give Eddie a home? Of course. I'd give any dog a home. Why not? But not a cat. <laughs> not a cat. Definitely not a cat. No, dogs no. are great. Though, but um, I love dogs. I love... Can I... I just put something out there that I might get cancelled for? Right? I love a dog. Dogs are great. Bosnian dog last week, Portuguese dog this week. We've had a few Romanian dogs in the time. Is anybody else looking around thinking, British owns the British dogs? Can't say anything. Just yeah. me? No, just me. Just, <laughs> just me. You, I'm just, just saying we've got enough just dogs you. over here, haven't we? No, yeah. of course, of course, every dog needs a second. Absolutely. Or in the case of Forrest, who was the very first dog of the week that we had on, a third chance. There we go. Right. Well, look, thank you very much, everybody who's been tuning in and watching and listening and watching online. And thank you very much to my esteemed panel as well, Charmin Davis and Francine Lewis. Thank it's been magnificent. It's been an extra thank short you. version of Friday Night Feast, but lots of love to you all. Has anyone got a um, taxi for Christie's? Taxi for Christie's. Well, it is almost time for me to hop in that taxi. It's remarkably light outside, isn't it? But this was the week when there were shocking scenes in Somerset as TV legend Mr Blobby annexed the historic city of Wells. There he is, look at him. Over the World Cup now, it was a proud day for the Kim family as five of them lined up for South Korea against Uruguay. And there was bad news for one man. After he found himself sat behind Simply Red singer, singer even oh. Mick 
Huck Hill on a transatlantic <laughs> flight. There it is. Oh, gosh. All right. Well, there you go. And I believe, oh, 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 we've got a little bit of breaking before we go. A little bit of breaking. It's full time. England drawn nil nil with the United States of America. So England didn't manage to score, but crucially, the Americans didn't manage to stick it in our goal hole either. There we go. <laughs> well, look, that's all it is now from Friday Night Feast. Thank you very, very much, everybody who's been watching, who's been tuning in, who's been doing it all. Francine Lewis and Charmaine Davis has been a wonderful panel. Up next here on GB News. Don't miss it because it's Mark Dolan tonight. I will be back at 3 p.m. on Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody. Much love. Good night. Love you all. Mwah. Hello, it's Aidan McGiven here from the Met Office. Next week is looking drier than this week, but for the weekend, we've got another bout of wet and windy weather on the way. It will turn things a bit milder briefly before the drier weather next week turns things colder. For the time being, our weather is coming from the west. Now, we've seen this ridge of high pressure affecting many of us on Friday. That's led to a fine day with a break in between weather systems, but there is still some rain around during the evening, some showers for western areas some longer spells of rain for the northwest of Scotland. Otherwise, clear spells for many, especially during the first part of the night and lighter winds. That will allow temperatures to dip to three or four Celsius in the east of England. A few mist patches first thing here on Saturday morning. But further west, it's a much milder start to the day because here we've got the winds whipping up. We've got some rain pushing into Northern Ireland and Western Scotland first thing, that reaching Wales and then eventually the southwest of England later. The rain initially on and off light and patchy, but it turns heavier and more persistent in the far west by the end of the afternoon. However, the winds, albeit with coastal gales, will be coming up from the south and so they'll be mild, 13, 14, perhaps 15 Celsius in places. It's dry in the southeast and the far north of Scotland until the evening. That's when the rain pushes through. And for parts of Scotland, the rain heavy and persistent could cause some issues with uh, that wet weather coming down on already saturated ground. But by the end of Saturday night, it is turning drier in many places except the southeast, and there'll be a slice of clear spells across central areas as we begin Sunday. Still, though, a lot of cloud remaining, and across East Anglia in the southeast, after a brief respite in the rain, there is more wet weather coming up during the afternoon, some heavy and persistent bursts of rain for London, East Anglia in the southeast. Showers for Scotland, Northern Ireland, West Wales, and there'll still be a few showers around on Monday, but overall the theme next week is for it to turn drier. Monday to Thursday on GB News, it's Bev Turner today from 10 a.m. We're gonna be here for you, our GB News family, to keep you up to date, but also make you smile. The guy went from puberty to adultery. <laughs> and I can't wait to bring a few of my own opinions. I have no time for cultural totalitarianism. <laughs> we'll engage in passionate, but always polite debate with your thoughts and opinions at the center of it all. Monday to Thursday, 10 till 12, on TV, on radio, and online. I'm Michael Portillo. Join me on GB News on a Sunday morning for topical discussion, debate, arts and culture, and sometimes even some ethical dilemmas. I don't always agree with you, Michael. <laughs> Michael Portillo, Sundays on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel.